Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Saturday, November 2nd. Okay, so we have the moon in Scorpio here all day because, of course, we're still sitting in the new moon in Scorpio energy. Of course, we just had this new moon in Scorpio pop off yesterday morning. We were wasting no time coming into the month, setting the tone on what it is that we want to experience for this next new cycle where emotions where our soul where our spirit where our intuition where our passions where our desires are concerned major major transformative energy that we are still very much sitting in that we will be in for this next lunar cycle but the moon and scorpio here today we are definitely going to be moving inward and i think we've already been inward but we're really going inward to examine the darker parts that again are being triggered and activated, especially under this new moon in Scorpio in order for the major change, the major transformation to take place in our soul space, in our emotions, in our intuition, in our head space as well. Again, reminder, still very much in the window of this new moon energy. If you haven't downloaded your moon guide, haven't done the new moon ritual, there's still time. We definitely want to take advantage of this very intense transformational energy. We want to set ourselves up for success for this next chapter. So today we also have Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves, moving out of Scorpio energy and moving into Sagittarius energy. So again, if you listen to the November energy forecast, you would know what's up. If you've downloaded your November energy guide specifically tailored for your zodiac sign, you would know where Mercury moving into Sag is going to be impacting your life the most. There's all kinds of energy swirling, and it's going to be very hard to put our finger on what is actually happening because, again, we're in the new moon. We're in a new month. Now Mercury's on the move, and today's the last day that Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger, will be in cancer energy. So we're at the final degrees of this cancer energy, which means that this opposition that began just a couple of days ago between the god of war... Mars and the god of the underworld, Pluto, started popping off. We have Pluto, the great transformer, at 29 degrees in Capricorn energy. Mars at 29 degrees in Cancer energy. They sit across from each other in the zodiac wheel, and the Cancer and Capricorn axis is all about safety, security, and stability. The Cancer energy wants that in our emotional realm, in our private lives, and the Capricorn energy wants that in our career, in our finances, in our public lives. So, of course, we have to strike a balance, and we're reaching this particular tension point, a breaking point if you will, because we're in Scorpio season. Mars and Pluto rule over Scorpio season, and we have to have a boiling point in order for us to feel like our backs are against the wall in order for us to be open, vulnerable to actually making some changes. Again, this is the season for the great transformation that needs to take place in our inner realm first before we're going to see any of those changes manifest in the physical realm. So there are 12 different aspects taking place here today. Eight of them are going to involve the moon. So the moon in the Scorpio energy going to make a positive interaction with Pluto, its ruler. And again, Pluto at the 29th critical crisis karmic degree of Capricorn energy. We love Scorpio and Capricorn energy working together because what you water, especially the earth, something will grow. Emotionally speaking, what we're growing is our ability to see what it is that we want to pursue for our future selves. And then we kind of snap back into our bodies, into the present moment. We realize where it is that we're at. We realize what we have to release, what we have to put an ending to, because we do not want to take all of the aspects of our present moment, people, places, and things with us into the futuristic vision, goal, dream that we're now looking to manifest. So this is going to be a major change in our mood, in our attitude, in our perspective, in our understanding of where death endings and closures are definitely needed in order for a rebirth, a renewal, a resurrection to actually take place. 
The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in the Sagittarius energy, opening up her heart to explore and experiment with what it is that she can change in the run of her day where routines, relationships, long-term goals are concerned in order to create more happiness, more joy, more safety, security, and stability. Now, this is a positive interaction, thankfully, which means that we are going to have an aha moment, emotionally speaking, on what it is that we actually want, what we actually need, what we actually desire for our future selves. And again, a lot of this is allowing ourselves to kind of move into la la land, imagine a situation, a circumstance for our future vision to actually take place for us to snap back in the present moment and see the gap, the distance from where it is that we're at to where it is that we desire to be. We have Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, and how it is that we express ourselves in the final degrees of Scorpio energy, trining beautiful interaction with Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger at the final degrees of cancer energy. This is water on water action. We love water on water action. First of all, it cleanses us. It purifies us from the heaviness, from the weight, from the gunk, from the junk that has definitely been weighing on our headspace, weighing on our shoulders. And then it actually refreshes us. It actually renews us. It puts us in a situation to clearly see what it is that, again, we want, we need, we desire. Now, this is an interesting dynamic. Again, at the final degrees of both signs, this is a time where we're trying to think very carefully through the difficulties, through the problems, through the issues that, again, we want to close the door upon. And if put in the right situation, we're able to actually communicate, articulate our inner realm thoughts and ideas outwardly. We're looking for solutions. We're looking to make plans and strategies. We're looking to kind of get tunnel vision on what we want to take action upon. We have Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings, retrograde in this Gemini energy, sextiling, beautiful interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer who is retrograde in this Aries energy, helping us with this new version of self, helping us to address the wounds of the old version of self to do what we can to actually fix them, heal them, repair them so that we can act as a whole integrated new version of self. Jupiter, of course, when being aspected in any kind of positive way. He's going to bring the hope. He's going to bring the faith. He's going to bring the optimism. He's going to bring the confidence. And because we're, you know, dealing with Chiron here, we're not necessarily exposing the wounds. We're actually exposing where we can heal them, where we can do better, where we can improve. And so right now we are kind of working on defining the actual goal, the details, the small steps don't really matter. At this particular juncture, we just need to clearly define the destination that we want to end up in, the goal, the vision, the dream that we actually want to manifest. Now, we're going to put the pieces together here eventually, but right now, we just need to align with a goal, a vision, a dream that makes us excited, that renews our spirit, that renews our enthusiasm, and really put us in a situation to realize what we want to learn. This is about evolving. This is about growth. This is about learning what we can in order to get to where it is that we desire to be. And so there's a lot of wisdom coming online and we're definitely in the mood and the attitude to focus on that big picture. Just as we have this beautiful interaction, of course, just when we're kind of getting somewheres and making some progress, the energy, the dark force energy tends to pull us on back. And so the moon and Scorpio energy going to make a very harsh interaction with first Jupiter and then Chiron. And a lot of this is because, again, we have to do the shadow work. We have to examine the unconscious parts of us, the programming, the conditioning that we didn't give ourselves that was forced upon us in our early childhood that, of course, we have to become aware of in order to flip the script. Now, a lot of this is because if we don't do the shadow work, if we don't hold ourselves accountable, if we don't deep dive in our emotions and our mental plane to unearth the darkest parts within us, then we're not going to be able to actually manifest the goal, the vision, the dream that we just kind of defined that we want to do, that we want to pursue. Reason being, 
If you don't do the inner work, you're the same vibration, you're the same frequency, you're the same resonance. So you can change all of the things in your physical realm, all the people, all the places, all the things. If you have not done the work to alter, to change, to grow, to heal, to improve your vibration and frequency, you are going to end up in a situation, an external situation that may look very different, but you're going to attract the exact same tough love life lessons, the exact same people in different bodies to teach you the lessons, to look within yourself, to do the freaking work so that you can actually create a goal, a vision, a dream of the highest vibration and frequency that you have done the work to actually match. That's how you hold on to anything that of course you're looking to manifest. So that is definitely a little bit of a Debbie Downer type of energy, but it is needed because the moon in Scorpio then makes a very awkward interaction with the North Node in Aries energy. And again, that North Node trying to get us on the right path, trying to get us in alignment with our next mission, our soul's potential. But right now, we just had this, you know, glimmer of hope and faith and dream and vision between Jupiter and Chiron. And then we moved in the darkest parts of ourselves to examine where it is that we have to make a shift in our emotions, in our energy, in our mental plane in order to actually be in alignment to manifest this goal, vision and dream that we just got excited about. And now we're stepping back and we're saying, okay, Where do I have the opportunity to actually make a move in the right path, in the right direction? Where do I have an option and an opportunity to do better, to improve, to grow, to heal, to evolve? We are not kind of piecing together a very detailed plan and strategy on how it is that we're going to bring this goal, vision and dream to life. Because right now we just need to take a couple of baby steps. So then Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, again, at the final degrees of this Scorpio energy, Mercury is going to sextile, which is a beautiful interaction with Pluto, the great transformer ruler over the Scorpio energy, who happens to be at the 29 critical crisis karmic degree of Capricorn energy. And so this is definitely going to, first of all, affect the mental plane. This is going to intensify our thoughts, put us borderline obsessed about what it is that we need to do, what we have to fix, what we have to heal, what we have to resolve, what we have to solve in order for us to move on. This is about wrapping up chapters. Again, Pluto in these final degrees of Capricorn energy, giving us the last final sweep, if you will, to totally destroy and demolish the old structures, the old foundations, the old aspects of the old world that the old version of self had built and created. And so Mercury now, again, we've had the detective hats on in the Scorpio energy. We've been, you know, using our intuition and our intellect. Now we got tunnel vision on us popping things off, having downloads, having light bulbs pop off. We're coming up with solutions. We're coming up with plans. We're coming up with strategies. This takes place at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Why that's important is because we sit in this particular energy, which is very intense, very empowering, very, I'm going to say, encouraging to us bossing up and doing what it is that we have to do. We sit in this energy until 318 p.m. Again, Eastern Standard Time. This is when Mercury shifts into Sagittarius energy, which of course there's an astral forecast out there that you should definitely be listening to. If you want a little bit more of a detailed energy guide, I would definitely recommend becoming a Patreon VIP. Um, There's lots of content to keep you in alignment, to keep you ahead of the game. And so, you know, with Sag moving, the Sag energy moving us forward into the light, into a new truth, into a new mission, into a new purpose, There's definitely going to be a major shift taking place in our inner realm, in the way that we're looking at life, the way that we are talking to ourselves about the goals, the visions, the dreams that, of course, we're starting to piece together. There is a certain level of learning, of philosophy, of intuition, of deeper meaning, deeper purposes coming at us in this Sag energy. So please, again, download the e-guide. Please be doing the work. We sit in that energy for a couple of hours. We are definitely going to need a little bit more time to acclimate to that. Then the moon in Scorpio energy going to come into a direct opposition sitting across from Uranus, the great awakener, who, of course, is retrograde in Taurus energy. Reminder, 
Uranus being retrograde in this Taurus energy is showing us where it is that we're holding on to old aspects, old relationships, old routines, old ways of going about, you know, supporting yourself, all of our physical realm aspects. That is the old realm, the old ra reality that the old version of self had built, had created. Why are we holding on to it? We've outgrown it. Why are we holding on to it? It's serving no purpose. But for whatever reason, we are holding on to it. Uranus is bringing an awareness to why it is that we're holding on to dead weight, to a dead horse, to the old for no good damn reason. So emotionally speaking, the moon and Scorpio, we're looking to identify the problem in order to actually fix it. We're looking where it is that we have to close the door on the old, where it is that a major change, a major transformation has to take place in our emotions first and foremost, before we're going to be able to let go from some of the physical attachments that of course Uranus is bringing full stop in our face. And so it doesn't really feel like clarity is coming online. It feels like anxiety is coming online because we are getting to a particular juncture where when you know what it is that you have to do in order to grow, in order to heal, in order to evolve, in order to move on, then responsibility and accountability kicks in. And that's where the weight of the world weighing on our shoulders, the to-do list that keeps getting longer and longer puts us in a state of paralysis. So we may not be able to kind of see how we're going to do it, but we know that we have to do it. And so again, we're kind of being tunnel vision in on what am I struggling to let go of? What am I struggling to release? What am I struggling to actually move on from? The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer, retrograde in this Aries energy. This is beautiful because whatever we identified needs to go, whatever we identify, we have to release, we have to close the door and we have to actually put behind us. This is going to be a healing movement. You know, this is a positive interaction, which means that Chiron is helping us to boss up, to tackle these issues head on. We're not running from it. We're not turning a blind eye from it. We're ready to heal and grow and fix and resolve whatever issues just came into our awareness. And the last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in the Scorpio energy, trining beautiful interaction with Neptune, who is retrograde in his rulership in Pisces energy. Again, water on water action. We love this because, again, it is helping to cleanse and purify the gunk away. It is helping to refresh, renew our soul and our spirit. It is helping to strengthen our intuition, to remind us of what it is that we're going through all of this pain, this trauma, this struggle, this challenge for, which is, of course, wrapping up the old karma, wrapping up the old pain wounds and trauma wounds so that we can start kind of honing in on the new goal, vision and dream that, again, we're very excited to to pursue. We don't know how we're going to get there. We don't know what actions to take, but that doesn't matter. We're focusing in on the destination and we're trusting that the universe is going to provide those particular details when it's time. But again, it's not time right now. We're still in the dark phase of the moon. This is a resting time. This is a reflection time. This is a releasing time. We will know when the green light go ahead is definitely supporting us in taking action and making moves because the solutions will appear when it's time to move on and move forward.